This is our inaugural show for Saturday, and we have one of my great heroes, the great Thomas Sowell. Most of you know who Thomas Sowell is. He wrote columns for decades. He's written fantastic books. He's been a leader in the liberty movement for at least half a century, as far as I'm concerned. And he's been warning the American people of tyranny, what tyranny looks like, creeping tyranny, aggressive tyranny. And from my perspective, we're sitting dab in the middle of it. And he's got this fantastic new book out, Social Justice Fallacies by Thomas Sowell. You can get it at Amazon.com or any major bookstore. It is a fantastic book. And I want to welcome you, Dr. Sowell. And let me just say this to you. Um, I've been following you since I was a little kid, not to date both of us. And you had an enormous <laughs> impact on my life. In fact, you've had an enormous impact on the way I do this program. I remember you on with Bill Buckley and Firing Line, and, and uh, you were a killer debater. Absolutely unbelievable. All that said, let me start it this way. Social justice fallacies. You started out like a, as a Marxist, as many young people do in colleges and universities. And it didn't take long for you to realize, wait a minute, this isn't all that it's cooked up to be. Was this social justice stuff and this inequality stuff, these terms, these ambiguities, did that have an impact on you first being a Marxist and then realizing, wait a minute, this is all BS? Yes, it did. And I, I think there's a very simple explanation uh, that, that as of the time I became a Marxist, I didn't know as much as I knew after several years of study and, and observing things going on. And as, as facts carried a lot of weight with me, uh, and when the facts kept going the wrong way, I realized that this, this was not going to do what uh, it claimed it was going to do. One of the big problems about the social justice uh, field is that it, what they say sounds so good. Uh, it's only after you study history that you find out just how bad, how horribly it actually turned out. Well, these phrases are very uh, nebulous. Social justice. What does that mean? Basically, uh, if you agree with the Marxists and the leftists, uh, then you support social justice. But on the other hand, if you support individuality and capitalism and private property rights, obviously you're anti-social justice. What does all this mean? Well, that's how, that's how, that's how they look at it. Uh, they seem to assume a world in which if things don't, don't, don't turn out the same for everybody, that means that somebody has done somebody wrong. And that's an incredible uh, assumption that human beings have such enormous uh, control over, over their own fates individually or collectively. I mean, when I think back over my life, and I'm sure other people can do the same in their lives, there are times that a particular person appeared on the scene and changed the, the, the whole trajectory of my life. And it's happened more than once, and I'm sure it's happened in the lives of many other people. Uh, there's nobody, nobody out there who has all the incredible amount of knowledge required to take over making other people's decisions for them. Do you find that these radicals, these, these autocrats, basically, this term social justice, do they really mean um, centralized government, redistribution of wealth, a permanent government that undermines representative government? Is, isn't this really the nomenclature for that? It, it, it is, and uh, uh, if you realize what enormously high opinions uh, many of the intellectual elites have uh, of themselves, uh, you can see that, that what, what it boils down to is uh, very uh, intellectual people like themselves just simply preempting the decisions of other people in every aspect of their lives. Uh, one of the things that, that is astonishing to me now is that we're having this big debate about sex education in the schools. And uh, to me, uh, the, the, the question is, uh, what qualifies the people who are pushing this stuff to take over the roles of parents? Uh, this, 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 what's also very troubling is that this all came out during the COVID pandemic when uh, students were studying at home and the parents got to see what, uh, what was being taught in the schools. Now, it so happens that 30 years ago, I wrote a book called Inside American Education, in which all of this was, was laid out just exactly as it's happening now. Uh, the, the fraudulence of it, the appearance that this is uh, responding to what the students want. I can't imagine 
how many uh, uh, young people in, in, in the elementary schools especially are, are saying that they are a boy but they want to be a girl or they're a girl and want to be a boy. I can't think of anybody in my whole lifetime well, who, who, who was saying things like that. And if you, and if you follow the, the sort of institutional way these things are done, there are groups outside the school system and inside the school system who want to do this and who know that the parents don't want them to do it. And they do it anyway, and they pretend that they are responsible, sponsoring, responding to what the students want. They're not. Uh, once, I, once I was at a, a, me, a meeting of educators, and uh, uh, while I was there, there was a man who was going around the country sell, selling a particular brainwashing program, and he showed me his uh, schedule, and he, and he was scheduled my gosh, every two or three days for months to, to be pushing this stuff in all the schools. And he mistook me if, as if he thought I was a, a school official, and he was regaling me with all of this. It's clear this is not a spontaneous thing. This is organized, and, is, and the, the, the uh, ta tactics used are the tactics that were developed for brainwashing in communist countries. The book is Social Justice Fallacies by Dr. Thomas Saul. And in fact, Dr. Soule, critical race theory, the 1619 Project, these are really anti-knowledge, aren't they? They're really propaganda uh, devices for the hard left that are being, you know, pushed in our classrooms, pushed in our society and so forth. Um, these attacks on the American system, do they promote equality? Do they promote uh, unity? Do they promote a melting pot society or are they intended to destroy this culture? Clearly it's the latter. And also when you said it, it's, it's not just propaganda, it is propaganda that overtly prevents other views from being heard. If they were just propagandizing, but the students were allowed to learn other things as well, different ways of looking at life, that's one thing. But, but anyone who for example, there, there are people who've taught uh, academic courses on racial and ethnic issues at Harvard and other places uh, who just simply stopped teaching their courses because if, if they were saying anything that was different from what the propagandists were saying, you would have violence on the campus and so on, and the university administrators would not protect their classes. So they, they, they just stopped doing it. One of the great scholars in this area, the late uh, Stephen Thernstrom, uh, uh, simply stopped teaching his course because uh, the, the, you had ignorance silencing knowledge. Ignorance silencing knowledge. And you write an entire section on knowledge. You break it down into different subsections. Um, let me ask you this. I don't even know if you watch news these days, but you're talking about what goes on in the classroom. Are we really a nation that's about knowledge now? Or are we a nation that's about uh, substituting the language of the hard left for real words, substituting the thought, thought process of people who really seek to find, quote unquote, the truth with, with ideology? What have we become on the whole? I mean, when I watch the news, all I hear is propaganda, surface level BS. Well, uh, yes. and I. I... That's the norm, unfortunately, in academic institutions, even the most prestigious. Uh, with the, the entire Ivy League is, is, is uh, in that same, uh, same mode. That uh, people who, uh, it scares me because you have people like, say, Heather McDonald or Charles Murray will come on a campus, and they do so at, at physical risk to themselves. And, uh, and, and again, the, the authorities do nothing. Uh, I've, I've been, of uh, course, I, 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 I don't normally go, go to those things anyway, but I've been on in some of them where they had the police all around, the doors all locked, and people outside banging on the windows and doors just to, in, to disrupt uh, the, the talk that's going on inside. Uh, I, I remember back in 1969, this has been going on a long time, and it's, it's, it's so sad that uh, it's taken us so long to to become aware of it. 1969, students at Harvard uh, went into the administration building, seized it, 
uh, went into the personnel records and were passing out all the personal information for the faculty and other things to the media and so on. Uh, the president of Harvard called in the police. The, the Harvard faculty uh, gave a vote of no confidence to the president. He resigned. And I think uh, after that, other presidents decide that the way is to get along is have preemptive surrender. And that's been really developed into an art. You've been studying our country for a very long time. The history, economics, philosophy, you covered the whole horizon. 40 years ago, 50 years ago, today. Is the country in a better position today than it was half a century ago, or is it in a worse position today? Oh, much worse, much worse. The silencing of the other side uh, has now be, uh, become much more pro prominent. Uh, and uh, the, the real danger is not in the silly ideas that are being uh, promoted. It's in the fact that nobody else is allowed to re reply to them without some danger to themselves. Do you see in this country a growing police state? I don't necessarily mean a police state like you'll see in these aggressive fascist or Marxist regimes, but sort of slowly but surely, like you're talking about controlling the language, which controls thought and activity, uh, this massive censorship that judges have now ruled on by this administration. You can see the uh, politicization of the Department of Justice and so forth. But let me put it to you this way, a more fine point. Are we a free country today? I remember Mises once saying that Americans talk like Marxists. Are we, are we a free country today, or are we a country on the precipice of losing our freedom? I think the latter. It's hard for me to see uh, just how, how we're going to come out of this, uh, especially uh, when people who are so willing to increase the powers of government don't seem to understand that it doesn't matter for what purpose you gave them that power, uh, which may have been good purposes. Uh, once they have that power, they can use it for whatever they, 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 they want. Uh, you know, the, the, the Federal Reserve System was set up, for example, to uh, pre prevent uh, runaway inflation or, or runaway deflation or, or bank failures. And the, the, the intellectuals were 100 percent behind that. But the cold fact is that there has been more deflation, as in during the Great Depression, and more inflation for decades on end, and more bank failures than ever occurred prior to the setting up of the Federal, uh, Federal Reserve System. But the Federal Reserve System, for example, uh, can, can uh, force people to do things they don't want to do just because they have the power to, to hold up what their, what their decisions are. And so the power created for one, one purpose is then used for some different purpose. When FDR took the, the United States off the gold standard, he used the law passed during the First World War to prevent trading with enemy nations. But once the power was there, you could use it for anything you wanted to. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.